Mr. Speaker, in October. The Prime Minister said in this House that Canadian forces would participate in bombing, quote, where and only where Canada has the clear support of the government of that country. Why has the Prime Minister completely reversed his position? What's it based on? The right Two things. First of all, increasingly, uh, ISIL has sought uh, safe haven uh, refuge in uh, Syria that we obviously want to prevent. On top of that, uh, Mr. Speaker, our uh, allies have been uh, conducting operations against ISIL in Syria. Some of our allies over the past several months with some success. Mr. Speaker, we think those operations are important. We think the mission is important. And for the very fact that this mission is so important to the security of this country, we intend to fully contribute. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. ISIL actually started in Syria. What's the Prime Minister's exit strategy? The right Mr. Speaker, let me once again be very clear what we're dealing with here. This group, the so-called uh, Islamic State, uh, represents a direct threat not just to the region, it represents a threat to the world, and by word and by deed, it represents a threat to this country. Mr. P Mr. Speaker, we have made important deployments. Obviously, uh, those deployments uh, could easily be changed if that were necessary. But, Mr. Speaker, uh, we're, our, our goal here is to deal with the threat to this country. And we will deal with it as long as it is there, and we will not stop dealing it with bef before that. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. We have ground troops targeting for airstrikes. We have aircraft strafing and bombing. We have lost a Canadian soldier behind enemy lines. Our forces are being shot at. Why does the Prime Minister still deny that our soldiers are in combat? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, of course, Mr. Speaker, we have uh, air forces that are in combat. We have not had a soldier killed behind enemy lines or, for that matter, killed by enemy forces. That's a reality, Mr. Speaker. Uh, these are the things we are doing, Mr. Speaker, to protect this country and to assist the Iraqis in doing a better job of safeguarding their own country. Now, Mr. Speaker, I don't know what the policy on the other side is. I hear all kinds of reasons why we should provide humanitarian aid, which, which we are doing. I hear no compelling argument on the other side of why we should completely ignore the very real threat to this country that Canadians know exists. This government understands it, and we are working with the entire international community to understand it. The Honourable Member for Papineau. Mr. Speaker, while today's motion asks for an extension of 12 months, the government has said our engagement in Syria and Iraq is for the longer term. What is the government's planning horizon for our combat role? The right honourable prime minister. Um, Mr. Speaker, um, once again, the motion today asks uh, to approve the government's uh, decision uh, to uh, extend the mission for up to 12 months. Obviously, Mr. Speaker, as we go forward, we will continue to evaluate the nature of the threat to this country and the nature of the actions that ourselves and our allies think are necessary. What we're putting before the House today, we believe, is the minimum le necessary to contribute in a robust way to a threat that is very real for this country and at the same time to try and reinforce the ability of Iraqi forces to carry their own their own Honourable Member for Papineau. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister's new motion doesn't specifically exclude the deployment of Canadian forces, Canadian special forces, into Syria. Will our special forces be allowed to operate in Syria? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, um, in this motion, the government has no intention of having our special forces operate in Syria. They will continue operating in northern Iraq, assisting uh, Peshmerga forces there. Uh, we will, however, Mr. Speaker, as I made clear earlier, we will extend our airstrike campaign against ISIL uh, to include uh, Syrian as well as Iraqi, Iraqi territory. Here, here. Uh, 
Speaker, on October the 3rd, the Prime Minister told this House, and I quote, we will strike ISIL where and only where Canada has the clear support of the government of that country. Oh. At present, this oh. is only true in Iraq. If it were to become the case in Syria, then we will participate in airstrikes against ISIL in that country also. Hmm. Today, he said, his government will not be seeking the express consent of the Syrian government for airstrikes. Could the Minister of National Defence tell us on what legal basis Canada will be dropping bombs in Syria? The seeking the consent of the Assad regime, but we have indicated very clearly that ISIL cannot have a safe haven in Syria. So we will conduct our missions on the same basis as our colleagues, the, the Americans and our allies, on the basis that ISIL is a threat to our colleagues, our allies, and to Canada itself. The Honourable Member for St. John's East. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the question was on what legal basis. You can't hide behind someone else's actions. This is about Canada. What is the Prime Minister of Canada basing himself on? What is the legal authority for bombing in that country? As our, our allies have indicated, they are taking necessary and proportionate, proportionate military action in Syria on the basis that the government of Syria is unwilling or unable to prevent ISIL from staging operations and conducting attacks there, including ultimately attacks uh, that include this country as a target. Mr. Speaker, that is the legal basis on which we are proceeding. The practical basis is we are determined to do whatever we can to degrade ISIL and to eliminate the threat it poses to this country, and Canadians support us doing that. Mr. Speaker, yesterday the Foreign Affairs Minister claimed that Canada's legal basis for bombing in Syria was, quote, the same basis as the Americans, unquote. The United States' justification for war in Syria is that they're defending the Iraqi government. Does the Prime Minister stand by that? The right Mr. Speaker, I think I've already made it very clear that uh, Canada will pursue uh, its uh, air campaign in Syria on the same legal basis that our allies have been uh, pursuing that campaign without challenge for the past uh, several months. Our position, Mr. Speaker, is that uh, ISIL should be given no safe refuge in Syria. The fact that Canada and our allies strongly oppose the Assad regime is, of course, absolutely no reason to allow ISIL safe haven in Canada, in, in Syria, from which it could launch attacks against us. Well, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The United Nations wrote to the Sec pardon me, the United States wrote to the Secretary General as required under Article 51 of the UN Charter and laid out their legal case for their planned intervention in Syria. Has the Prime Minister written to the United Nations laying out Canada's justification for their planned intervention in Syria? Once again, Mr. Speaker, the government is pursuing this action on exactly the same uh, legal basis as its allies. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, I'm not sure what point the leader of the NDP is ultimately making. If he is, if he is suggesting, if he is suggesting, Mr. Speaker, that uh, there is any uh, significant legal risk to lawyers from ISIL taking the government, of, <laughs> taking the government of Canada to court and winning. The Government of Canada's view is that the chances of that, Mr. Speaker, are negligible. Uh, we are clearly we are clearly defending the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Extraordinary, Mr. Speaker, living in a, can in a Canada where that sort of idiocy passes for argument. I know the uh, Honourable Leader of the Opposition will want to avoid using terminology like that that can cause a great deal of disorder. And while I obviously won't repeat the uh, terminology used by the Leader of the NDP, if 
his idea of protecting Canada's national interests is that you don't do everything in your power, uh, legally, militarily, and in terms of cooperation with allies, to defend the interests of this country against the terrorist caliphate. He and I, I obviously, have very different ideas of what the national interests of this country are. Minister of Canada thinks he's above international law also. He's not, and Canada is not. That's all we've got.